Hi, a lot of people in my comments ask me to make a video about how to integrate an open source LLM with Langchain. In this video, you will learn how to do so. We will use Hugging Face and use a pretty new model called Falcon. We use the smaller 7 billion parameter version. Small disclaimer upfront, if you expect to use an open source model and get results like with GPT-4, you might become disappointed. So before we start with the code, I will give you a short introduction to Hugging Face and Hugging Face Hub. You can find the link to the code in the description. It's part of my larger Langchain course. So let's start with Hugging Face Hub first. Hugging Face Hub is a collaborative platform designed for discovering, sharing and collaborating on machine learning models and datasets. It simplifies the process of deploying new models. It supports a broad range of machine learning tasks and encourages the open source community to share and evaluate its models. I'm here on the Hugging Face website, to be precise, on the Hugging Face Hub documentation. As you can see, we've got a lot of different models, datasets, and demo applications here. And feel free to explore the website. There's a lot of interesting stuff going on. Hugging Face offers an open LLM leaderboard where you can compare different open source models by different metrics. As you can see, the Falcon model is currently on top, but this is the 40 billion parameters model, uh, which is a little bit too large to use for us. We will use the 7 billion parameter model. And as you can see, there are two models, the normal model, Falcon 7b and Falcon 7b Instruct. We will use the Instruct model because this one is fine-tuned to actually allow interaction with the user and create human-like answers. The normal models do not work in this way. Even the GPT models, like GPT 3.5, are Instruct fine-tuned models. This name, which is the repository and the actual model name, is some kind of ID which we use to interact with Hugging Face Hub. Just keep that in mind, we of course can copy that value later too. So before you can actually use one of the models here, you need an account for Hugging Face. And if you created an account, then you need your API key. You can find it here. You click here on your name, then on settings, and then on access tokens. And there you can create an API key. Here you can just copy it and store it somewhere in a safe place. So I'm here in VS Code. You can see there are a lot of notebooks and you will find the correct notebook for this video in open source chain.ipython notebook. So as you can see here, we have to install some packages like Torch, Transformers, Hugging Face Hub, Langchain, and also some other packages. And this can take some time. It took me the first time six and a half minutes. So maybe take a coffee and wait for the installation. So let's start with the installation and this will even take some time for me, even as though it's cached. And after installing the packages, we have to import the Hugging Face Hub class from Langchain. And we also have to import the prompt template and the LLM chain class. So after importing the classes here, we have to set the API key for Hugging Face. You can do it just in your code and you have to paste your token here, uncomment this line. Otherwise, you can just paste it here in the .end file. As you can see, I've got an OpenAI API key here and also the Hugging Face API token. So you can store all your tokens in this .end file. And what I'm going to do now is I use the load.env function from python.env to load all of my environment variables here inside the notebook. So I don't have to paste anything sensible information here in the notebook itself. After loading the environment files, we have to instantiate the Hugging Face Hub class with a repo ID and some optional model quarks. And here is the ID of the model. You can see this is the repository name from the leaderboard here and the model. So you can just copy this value and then paste it to VS Code and just paste it here as the repo ID. Like I said, the instruct model should be able to perform better when doing conversation than just the normal Falcon 7b model. So let's load everything here. So now let's create a simple template. As you can see, the template is just a multi-line string with one variable. And we pass the template to the from template class method of the prompt template class. This will create the prompt template instance. And then we pass in this prompt template and the LLM, which we created here by hugging face hub uh, to the LLM chain. And then we can just run this chain with the run function and pass in the topic we want to have here. So for example, we want now the model that it makes some uh, jokes about, for example, ducks in this case. So let's try it out. And I will show you, this is pretty underwhelming in my opinion. 
So the user is asking a question. The user is asking for a specific type of duck. So in my opinion, this is a pretty bad answer, but you can significantly improve the performance. And this is by providing some context. So I create another template here, but instead of just passing in the query or the input, we will use the, some context or so an own knowledge base. For example, this little article about a high jumper and yeah, that's it. I think details are not necessarily important. And we pass in this context, so this knowledge base uh, to the prompt template. So we do it like this. We've got two variables now, and then we can just ask here who won the 2020 Summer Olympics in men's high jump. And then we pass to the run function, a dictionary, because we've got two, two inputs. So we have to pass it like this. Query is the query here and the context is this context variable. So this knowledge base, if we do this first, we have to run all of the code, of course. And then here we can see Tamberi of Italy and Qatari athlete Mutas Essa Barshim shared the gold medal. So this is more a human like answer, some kind of answer I would expect. So it works definitely better when we provide some own kind of knowledge base. But as I told you at the beginning of the video, the quality of the open source models, in my opinion, are far away from the OpenAI models. So let me think, what is your opinion about this kind of war of open source models against the OpenAI models? Do you like the quality? Are you a little bit disappointed? Please write this in the comments. If you liked the video, feel free to subscribe to my channel and like the video, of course. Thank you very much. Bye bye.